That might be the monkey off their back. But nonetheless, they're actually going to go into the knife round here on Inferno. And it's an important one too. See, I get that. I'll, I'll let, as the knife round plays out now, which won't take a moment unless the players decide not to knife each other if you saw a mirage. Like, I understand the point you're making about the fact that, look, their expectations in terms of winning the event won't be as high. So potentially that's less pressure there. But in my mind, and from my experiences playing and being associated with players that had that online rep, it's almost as though perhaps that pressure now transcends and comes across in a different form. The pressure now isn't for them to win. The pressure is for them to shape that online attack. And that's still going to be there regardless of what their expectations are for coming in and winning the event. I think that that's still going to hang over the heads of some of these players. So for me, I don't think they'll be able to escape that. Uh, I'd be curious to see how well they got land. I think they've got... I think they'll be as keen as anyone to prove that they do have what it takes. We know that Sico, he went individually, went absolutely ballistic at ACL Melbourne, even though his team didn't get out of groups. He still held his own and then some. I think his team, they'll be looking to get some revenge on some of their opponents as Pex in a one versus four. Oh, look at him go. His movement is on point. He actually just went into He's the He's outmaneuvering the, the chickens. What do you make of the chickens jumping up and down in the latest update? I love it. Absolutely love it. Okay. You know, you don't elaborate on that, or you just you just love it. What do you make of it? What do you, you want? Some sort of in-depth analysis now? Well, I'm just keen to know why you love it. That's a. It wasn't. I like it. It wasn't. A, it's okay. It was. I love it. Right. Can love something without having to justify it. People do it all the time. <laughs> Welcome to modern society. I love casting, Jim. <laughs> Please elaborate. <laughs> <laughs> I can't. Nonetheless. <laughs> X5 starting out here on the terrace side. It was certainly the side in which they had the most success. On well, Mirage by literally, I think, for what, the first maybe 10 or 15, 10 or 12 rounds, just charging to bomb sites and taking those jewels. I wonder if Inferno is not the sort of map that you can keep up that sort of aggression. I think it's fair to say it's a lot harder with the touch choke points. So they might have to have a bit more versatility in their play. Keen to see how well they can go. They win the pistol though. It might be wearing signs here for Alpha Sydney. Put your cans in the air. That's right, cans in the air for the third and final map here. Between this is war. This is real bloody war. <laughs> real bloody war here on this stage. Next five. Charging up city mid. Quite quickly as well as RBZ doing a good job of finding one and PC can also chime in with one. So this fast aggression that works so well for them on Mirage, not quite carrying over onto Inferno at the moment as we suggested it might notice. RBZ actually gets another headshot at Sikro, so it's a clean sweep nearly at the moment here as Tux actually finds himself in a one versus three and I'm not quite sure whether that's the smartest play RBZ. I know that your team's in a strong position here now, but I don't think it's time yet to pull out that knife. We don't know how strong Tux can be, but he won't win in this instance. Wizard actually getting that shot through the wall. Doing a good job on the RBZ in particular, actually getting that early spot, doing quite aggressive there and second did looking through the window and picking them apart and good work there. Yeah, great work there. Alpha Sydney starting this third map off quite well, taking full advantage of that counter terror site. XL5 though, I've actually bought into this round too, so Deagles, Tech 9s, and a single grenade coming out on Dan's so Early aggression coming out from Ferg, trying to take control of Banana, but he's met by RBZ. That P90 at the car, and we'll back off just momentarily. But now we do see Fur continuing to try and push that smoke. We'll back off now. In the meantime, though, the rest of XL5 have made their way through second mid, so they're looking to take control of apartments at the moment. Yeah, the city's actually playing quite passively, aren't they, at A side at the moment? Sicko just spotting from jungle side, but really it's Echo that we're more interested in. He's holding on the balcony at the moment. That smoke just slowing down the progress of the terrace. They're almost hesitant to push through, but I don't actually think it's blocking the exit. And I'm not quite sure what Mizu's doing there. He's running into his teammates, so they might need to make a move here soon. They've waited too long. They've really lost that one member of B, and oh. Echo doing a great job of actually getting those two frags on the balcony. Hex will find one, and not quite able to convert onto that second one there, but I'm not quite sure the terrace gym, they were bumping into each other in the A-halls there, and ultimately, as they went to make their move, they were shut down with relative ease there from Alpha Sydney. Yeah, I'm not too sure what they were doing. They were, like, quite literally looking at each other. I don't know about you, but remember in CS 1.6, if you use the in-game, the mouth of the terrorist would move, so you'd have <laughs> yeah. people that would actually so inclined to look at the person they were talking to in-game. <laughs> Maybe that was happening well, there. Well, that's polite, Jim, isn't it? That's just madness. True. But potential onslaught here as they make their way. Caught with that uh, Molotov there. And completely blinded. As Sika is just loving this at the moment. RBZ and him, the cleanup crew top mid. They didn't get much further than that. Stomped. 
We just had the freedom to stay in the top mid there and just spray wildly down mid. He was never in danger, at least in his own mind, of dying at all. He just had complete confidence in the end. He made that forte look so easy. But I think that's the sort of round against um, harder opposition on not just the top level of Australian Counter-Strike, but also Elite Counter-Strike, where if you were to stand in the middle of the pillars there, you'd be punished quite quickly. The strength of those pistols would be taking you down. But x off one buying into this round. Dance winning the first exchange, but Wizard also taking down Tux. So good work by him. And the frags are coming thick and fast at the moment towards this beast off. Yeah, very fast aggression here. We look on the overlay, we saw XL5 taking very, very fast aggression towards that B uh, bomb site, taking control of Banana. And now it's left to three versus three, but HP on Ferg and Dance is questionable. But nonetheless, counter terrorists aren't to know that at the moment. They're just forced to play very passive in the sites. You can see Wizard holding from the library. So it's a very, very passive line. It gives his position up. It actually gets taken down. So great work from Mizu there. Now he's going to put pressure on the A-bomb site here. Echo holding from that pit. Has two low terrorists to contend with as he does take down Dan's. So that bomb now goes down at Diggity. Taking down Ferg as well. Not able to find Mizu. And now it's a one versus one. PC Kid making his way through the library. Bomb should go down. And it should be quite an easy plan here for Mizu. Question is, can he, can he slip away? PC Kid right there. Easy headshot for Mizu. Makes it look effortless. As he takes down, and first round on the board for XL5. Alpha Sydney there, their economy is a little bit shaky, but they're going for an AWP on Sicko, and the rest of them are going to force into it with UMPs, pistols, and a Famous. Really smart play there, and that three versus three, they actually sent Mizu the man that had the most HP, really the only sort of feasible HP to work with, to look for that frag at jungle. Ultimately, took down the member in library and was able to split onto the A site, but everyone else was so low that it had to be Mizu, otherwise it wasn't going to work out for them. As XL5 now try and put some pressure on mid early. Tux has actually made his way a long way up and shooting that 10 on at close range. Perhaps lulling Alpha City into a sense of false security that they've got some lesser weapons. Sito actually connecting there with that AWP. So he's yeah, gone down. boost over the smoke. Ooh, okay. The Yaman boost there in that instance. So using that height to full effect there, taking him down. And now Mizu, perhaps the savior of last round, might have to do something special this round as well. Yeah, I don't know if... I certainly don't think the Observer caught that, but I actually saw the shadow um, on RBZ that indicated Sico was going up that boost. So... Quite cool, actually. Don't often see that in competitive play, at least here in domestic leagues in Australia. But uh, PZ Kid now getting very close to personal with that P350. Takes down both of them. Pex and Ferg go down quite quickly. He does have information on where the bomb is now as Mizu continues to charge into the B bomb slot. Though that Molotov forces him back, and now it's just him, his teammate, and a few. Easter Bunny chickens in the banana. They're going to continue to force the issue, though. Echo forced to retreat. PZ Kid, though, should clean up. Doesn't get the trade frag, though, as Mizu gets his way. Just brute forces his way into that B bomb site, though. Sicko is not taking that duel just yet, waiting for his teammate Wizard to arrive. I've got no idea how they actually made their way in. There were three CTs there at the time, and now Mizu is faced with a real prospect of going one versus two, and this is certainly manageable for him, but caught off down there, trying to jump on top of those barrels to perhaps use that back of the site. To his advantage, you jump on those boxes and have a good opportunity at that first drop on any players coming through connector or even coming through banana. Wouldn't be expecting to have to move the crosshair up that high, but nonetheless, caught out in the open. Alpha City doing a good job recovering that round and resetting the economy here of the terrace. But that plant will aid them. It'll mean that whilst they eco this round, potentially not as bad as it could have been. And it looks as though Alpha City, for their own sake, will just be trying to make sure that every player has. As much utility as possible, you can see at the moment they're just juggling those weapons around. It looks as though Echo will have to make two with an M4 and not much utility, but Sicko again, Jim, he's been leading from the front all night. Yeah, he's he's just having a bumper night, as we would have expected to. Um, if there was a player to watch, definitely on that Alpha Sydney lineup, he'd be one of my he'd be my top one candidate. But he is looking at the second mid here. Does catch the first frag there onto Pex. Pex just left. Bloodied and cold on the floor as Wizard actually Triples up there with the Famous. Not able to find Ferg for the fourth, but Ferg's actually made his way into CT spawn. Unbeknownst to him, he has free access to the B-bomb site, but I believe it is RBZ that has realised this. Made his way back up Banana. Could do some damage here with that AWP and certainly looking to do something to that effect. Well, never really renowned as an AWP player, but certainly in his young days when he was playing over under France, was known as a power frame. He was really the X factor in his team. These days, it's more so the IGL and relying on some of his star players within his team to get 
the heavy lifting done for him, but certainly don't count him out. He's made his way around through past the CD arch at the moment, peeking with that stroke towards the pit and just put up the head, but unfortunately the aim punch proves to be his downfall there is did get the crosshair on, but couldn't quite connect with that trigger before his crosshair went flying towards the sky over the back of one bullet into his chest. And Alpha Sin, whilst it looked a little bit dicey towards the end there with that all pin in his hands, they'll be happy with the fact that they did win out that round quite convincingly. Wizard, nice triple there from CT no, from Diggity, I should say. Yep, from Diggity, getting it done, just digging his heels in. Spraying that famous 25 bullets, three frags. Not a bad effort, but now we see early aggression here coming out from XL5. They're going to try and force the issue with that. Mortov is just eating away at Tux's HP, and <laughs> he's sitting on one, to be precise. But Pex also affected by it as well. XL5 have to slowly making their way at Banana here, but they've already felt the brunt of uh, some CT utility looking to make, it, uh, make an entry here on the site. Like a moth to the flames. XL5 can't help but stand in those Molotovs as they're laid down. They will make their way in towards the B site now, and I hope they're safe. No oh, Molotovs are down, but even the gunfire is proving to be their downfall. Dan's connecting Pex before ultimately he falls and misses now in a clutch situation again. But this time, more tricky. It's fair to say, it wasn't one versus five. Has found two kills. You can see the CT is quickly rotating though, so we know he is at B. He's moved into the side and does have that bomb, but the position of Wizard shouldn't allow him to get that plant. You'd think that Wizard might potentially step out as soon as he hears that noise, so Wizard just trying to make sure he does have cover towards the connector, which he does, but in the end, he almost scares himself off the plant. We'll get the frag done, but lost a lot of HP, oh. but connects through the smoke. Oh my goodness, the spam there. Miz, Rolls ooh. the dice and connects. He's just won the lotto. It's down to one versus one. This was a one versus five, and he has four points of health, but Sicko. Saves the day. Hard and mouth stuff there for Alpha City, but that fourth kill through the smoke. Please, Mizu. Please. Putting the ooh in Mizu. <laughs> oh, that's horrible. <laughs> that's so bad. Uh, <laughs> now, but it's up there with all time worst, I reckon. But, surely not. I've had much worse. <laughs> Puts the ooh in Mizu. Uh, I don't know. Uh, Sicko does have the old moving towards second mid quite early here. Backing off, did spot out a lot of presence there, and the T's are an eco here, so you can see them actually funneling the way very quickly up those stairs. Sinto holding strong there at Diddy, actually, will take down Fergus. Really doesn't have much in the way of support. Tux was in apartments, but no one else nearby, so as Tux cops another grenade, using his magnet, they full effect. Does it rain in on him? His teammates falling apart here. Alpha Sydney holding strong. Well, so strong that they've forced Mizu back into T spawn, it seems. Is this just going to. By the looks of things, just chill by the hay. As you do. But they're pushing down mid. Might be able to catch one off here with the Deagle. But at the moment, would you argue it is a simple five versus one? What is he doing? I don't Jump, know. Jumping one Vs. I, I at least need to see the MLG sticker and the FaZe Clan sticker on your <laughs> Desert Eagle before you attempt that, son. <laughs> And he wasn't doing it in the right order, that's for sure. And I think ultimately he paid the due price there as he did get taken down with a relative ease there. But Alpha Sydney at the moment, they're looking really strong. Sicko is doing a, a monster job just locking down with that orb. Even when he's not doing anything with the frags, he's getting information for his team. He's almost scaring the terrorist away from his choke point. But now, so concerned about his presence. You can see at the moment, Wizard just standing in the smoke. And Tux, again, that mid stack that we saw last time that worked so well. Tux is trying to appease them again. He's moving away at mid, but that flash should allow him to catch them off guard. Gets the first, what's the second? Takes him down in that nice double up there from Tux. We'll open up this A-bomb site. He's looking for the 30. Spots that ego. Oh. Should convert and does. So Tux single-handedly takes control of that A-bomb site. And this will be, unless a disaster happens, XL5 winning their second round. Yeah, just charging into that site. Zero Tux given. And now it is a three. Oh, sorry. Should I say a two versus five? Tux continues to charge into T-spawn. It is Pex that finds the frag. We'll try to CT spawn. This Pex that finds a frag there, but RBZ has given up his position now. And X5 are knocking on that door. RBZ though, they just <laughs> momentarily touch chests in that mist. You know, chest bump it was. XL5 find their second round of the half, and they've they found it tough so far. It's tough going on the uh, terror side of Inferno, but that's not really... Um, foreign territory for a lot of teams at this stage. They need to get more rounds on the board, though. Yeah, it's important that they win this one, isn't it? 
because they really need to shore up their own economy at the moment. Actually, RBZ has some mass, so despite the fact they're up so much, he's still struggling with his own economy. Citro needs to be a little bit careful here, and I think he senses that as well as he does back off. And Wizard, I think just playing close by as well, just trying to juggle watching the boiler as well as mid. But it will be Tux. He's really taking on that responsibility of taking mid control, and he's supported by a few of his teammates. Dan's moving up through apartments this time. Looking to try and find a frag or two and stay away from any Molotovs, which has proven to be his downfall all night long. Yeah, Danny the Flame. Just very, very cautious. Once bitten. Well, let's be honest, three or four times bitten. At least five or six. Seven times shy. So they do make their way. Is, yeah, they're holding quite strong here, aren't they, with this setup here? Interesting to see how this A attack pans out. But uh, PZ Kid is actually rotating back towards the B bomb site. Unbeknownst to him, XL5 are almost all in the pillars. Other than that, Lone Star Dance, the boost is actually up on the, the porch there as they do now try and pressure this A bomb site. Missy finds the opening frag here, but Wizard's in a good position to make a difference there. Finds one, looks for the second, takes it down with the bomb as well. And Sicko's pushing that smoke, pushing position there. Unscopes at the worst opportune moment, but still makes that frag onto Mizu. As RBZ cleans up at the opposite side there. No a ch no chance of a wrap. Now for Sydney, again, shutting XL5 out of the bomb sites. An 8-2. This is getting out of hand for X5. I think they're going to be a little bit disappointed. We know this is their last match of the season. They won't be making it to the land finals, but I think they would have been wanting to go out on a strong note to try and show that potentially whilst they didn't deliver their best all season long, that certainly they did have that potential. But it is Alpha Simic here going very aggressive with him using that spawn to his advantage. Now, do they know he's there? I'm not quite sure they do. The HG actually masking those footsteps. So as he pushes his way down now, we could be in for a treat here, Mr. Cameraman. Please go back to now Wizard. American. Oh, no, not like this. He's got two. He's actually bolting back under the Vietnam bit now but nonetheless you can see how well that flank worked as all of x5 trying to make their way into banana quite early on and not having any clues to the fact that wizard was there. even pecs now doesn't recognize that wizard's there so he steps up <laughs> gets his third for the round and masterfully played by the man the aggression working out perfectly what happened to our other cameraman we got a, we got stiff with the north american one Oh, he's doing his best. It's his first time around, so yeah, I think props. full credit to him. At the moment, I think the action's happening so fast that really you can watch anyone. The Franks are coming in thick and fast as those chickens jump around. Mizzy's had enough of that. He's in no laughing mood as he knifes one of them. I think Sicko jumps over the top, showing a little bit more mercy in his play, at least with the chickens, not so much XL5. He's spotting down Banana, but you can see they've been scared away, certainly, from that choke point after last round. It will be mid. PZ Kid quickly needs to backtrack and caught off guard again gun out. with the nade in hand. Not for the first time tonight, Jim. No, that's right. We've seen them, multiple members of each team get caught out just by the speed and ferocity of some of these charges as they now make their way back up into the bomb site. Bombs going through the apartments and should be planted without too much of an opposition in sight here as Pex in close proximity there. Does take down Sicko, but will be traded out. RBZ finds him and will take control of apartments as he leaves Wizard. Try and pull something out of his hat. Not able to do so. And leaves RBZ in at this two versus one. He's traded out quite quickly there by Mizu, so great work from him. Up for Sydney. Surrender around to XL5, just off the bat of some early aggression. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised to see Alpha Sydney go quite aggressive here. I think that, that when they be going aggressive, whether it be in mid like Wizard, but even to a lesser extent, even players such as Citro pushing up Banana with that AWP or even pushing into that second mid window, I think they've been doing a fantastic job of really just shutting down and picking X5 apart. And at the moment, it looks as though PZ can go actually pushing up Banana and those nades tagging down those moves of X5. Pex already down to 70 points of health. And Potentially in a little bit more trouble now as RBZ and PC Kid look to inflict a little bit more pain onto him. Ferg down to 24 and he's still fighting. I'm not quite sure what the intent is there as he exposes himself completely, standing on top of the sandbags and spraying through, giving up his position with the sound cues. He's gone down and the in-game leader forced to coach from the sidelines. He will play no further part in this round. As Siko actually picks up Mizu as well, so the pain doesn't end there for XL5 just yet. As Tux goes face to face with Sicko. Sicko getting the better of him again. Instant Sicko though. Changes position, doesn't need a scope for that one there. Dance feels the pain of a former teammate. At least Pex in a five versus one. And with Sicko in form like that, I'd be backing him to get the fourth frag of the round. Pex, sharp frag there onto Wizard. Knows that Sicko's around. It's all too easy for him there. Finding that last frag. Four for the round. And, well, an impressive showing from him. And his best of three. 
Sicko is an absolute monster. I've said that so many times tonight, but he keeps coming out with these multi-frags. It's not as though some players we point out on the scoreboard like to just accumulate frags one or two at a time, and you never really notice them going, I guess, too explosive. They just sort of tend to plug away to their own thing, and before you know it, they've got a lot of frags. But Sicko is certainly that player with that star potential that can really explode at a moment's notice. Again, push the second mid, picks another one off guard. Quite aggressively, they miss who's the one to fall, and has another one in his sights as Dan's thinking about making his way up, but spots him all the top, and quite rightly backs off, but... It'll be deferred in, in, in the end that goes down nonetheless. So Sicko gets his oh. third for the round again. That was a nice shot. And he has just got so much confidence in his play at the moment. He's willing to take those close range all battles. It's all left up to Tux in that instance. Wizard taking him down, but not before Sicko picked up Dan's as well. Picking up a 4K for himself. 20 frags again. in 14 rounds. Two 4Ks in a row for him, that, that man Sicko. He does what he wants. Sicko reminds me of myself in Counter-Strike 1.6. Yeah, only with skill. And frags. Yeah, but... And playing Div that, 1. Apart from that, we're really, really, you know, pretty similar. Oh, I wouldn't say you look similar. Nonetheless here, XL5 changing the pace. They're going fast. Up the banana, that Molotov, or that smoke, should I say. Just halts that progression. And, well, doesn't matter anyway. RBZ chances his hand. Gets the triple through the smoke. Taken down by Tux. And... Tux is in a really advanced position here, but he's only on 6 HP, and while well, that grenade signals the end of his participation in this round. Mizzou, though, will get the plant, and we'll need to win this round, though. Three versus one, final round of the half. What can he do in order to, as Alpha Sydney actually flash themselves and Molotov themselves out of the sight? Sicko, though. He's just an absolute beast tonight. 22 frags. I just want to check his DPR. Sicko's DPR in that half was 147. That is phenomenal. 147 in the first half. Albeit CT in third, I, what third I, I don't was. care what side or map it is. To, to produce 147 DPR first half is absolutely off the charts. And he's been my man of the match for tonight, regardless of which way this match does finish up. It certainly looks as though it is going X5, or I should say Alpha Sydney's way, X5 going down the drain. But nonetheless, 147 DPR. Yeah, he's, he's going absolutely ham too. I mean, that's a sign of someone that is just in the zone. As so we do see XL5 very aggressive with his pistol. Mizu pushing down mid. At this stage, unsupported. He has a teammate watching over his shoulder, but Tux has actually given his uh, position away. Sicko, though. <laughs> finds the frag onto Mizu. RBZ and Wizard also find a frag each, but Tux actually finds a double. Can't find the third, though, and... Well, it just leaves Pex to rotate out of this B-bomb site. Doesn't spot the head of Wizard there, just chilling out in the pit. And Alpha Sydney bring up the thirsting around the pistol around. XL5 are actually buying into this, at least it tucks with that scope. And the rest of them are going to buy pistols, so all to do here for XL5. Yeah, I think they've got to buy. I don't think you can afford to let Alpha Sydney get up to 14 rounds or potentially even more in that instance. I think that this is the only right play. They need to try and take the gamble, try and make a few nice shots, and Tux, they're trying to do just that as he takes that scout across top mid. And the terrorists obviously would have heard those shots and perhaps being a little bit more cautious now as they lob perhaps a smoke or even a flash up mid from the ramp without necessarily exposing themselves. But really now they are actually trying to take the duel and Tux not able to connect. He missed a lot of shots right there. Perhaps the first few might have been difficult, but the last two he should have connected with. So Sicko puts him to death. It's now only left up. As Dan's also falls, the three members here of X5. And Pex can hear those footsteps as they make their way up mid. But potentially, it's going to run out of teammates quite soon as Mizu in the smoke. Oh, they blocked each other. They run through Mizu. It's taken down in the back by BZ kid. And it's quite comical now. But what's not comical is the fact that Alpha Sydney are putting on an absolute clinic on this map. I know that Sicko's been leading from the front. But also the other members. I mean, Wizard's got 20 frags. RBZ with 17. They've been doing a great job of supporting the cause as well. And I think really looking forward to seeing how these guys go at LAN and whether they can deliver, which has always been the question, I think, with this group of players. They're certainly uh, showing form at the right end of the season with Alpha Sydney. And Pax just looking to make something happen with that Desert Eagle. Does connect onto Echo there, but not able to find... Oh, there he is. Welcome to the game, Pax, with that Desert Eagle. Looking for the second... Pushes perhaps unnecessarily there, but they're in the 14th round, and you feel as though XL5 there may have mentally packed in the towel. RBZ, though, springs in action out of the ball, not able to find the frags. Tux, though, pushes into mid, finds RBZ. Sicko, though, will rejoin his teammates there, take that bomb towards B that's completely open. 
Yeah, as RPZ st stepped out the window room, he would have actually spotted all four CTs. That's why I can see Sudo at the moment just bolting in towards the B site, not even checking it at all because he knows the entire CT presence is at A. You actually push forward now and doesn't have much HP, but would you count him out in the form that he's in at the moment? Actually tags one member there. I think he might have been Ferg through the smoke. And actually reposition himself in the connector. His teammates actually getting back into the site to help him out now that HE will connect onto Ferg. And as they make their way into B here, they must retake this through the keep the chances alive. But they're getting picked apart. Sicko, we said he was on 20 points of health. He's already got two frags. Not quite a third, but he got Mizu down to eight points of health. And now it's almost mission impossible. The young member of Team XL5, formerly of Legacy, not able to do it. He falls and. 15-3, it's only a matter of time here, I think, Jim to Alpha Sydney wrap this up, and they and Insect, I think, are the back into tonight's performances, will be securing themselves land birds, respectively. Yeah. Certainly can be proud of uh, what they've achieved so far. Alpha Sydney looking to close this one out quite quickly now that they're on match point. And Sicko picking up where he left off in those previous rounds there. PZ Kid also supporting him well in mid-dance. Flashed opponents here, looking to capitalize, not able to do so. Tux picks up a, potentially an AK here in the banana, but uh, he's left with a tough fight at the moment. As he just darts in and around, not able to do anything else than that. It is all pedestrian from there. Alpha Sydney convincingly in that third map over XL5. And well, from what we saw on the, uh, the first map cache, I thought it was going to be an arm wrestle between these two teams all the way through, but Mirage completely changed that and Inferno cemented the deal for Alpha Sydney. Yeah, I think for Cash, I, I wouldn't write off the fact that I know the guys were probably, what, trying for about an hour to get the server online. They were jumping between talking to admins and I think they were perhaps a little bit flustered. I know that we saw so much back and forth at the beginning of Cash. Each team was echoed like nearly two or three times in six sessions. So I think the start of that map was probably not a reflection of both teams, but in the end, Sicko, definitely a man of the match for me. Really disappointed by XL5, not just tonight. I think that in the context of the CG season, so CGBL Autumn 2016, when I look at all 12 teams in Div 1, with the exception of maybe Ferox, who struggled to keep together a core 5 the entire season long, XL5 were probably up there for the biggest disappointment for me. When I look at the talent they've got on their roster, mm. I don't understand how they now find themselves eliminated from contention. They'll finish in fifth place in the group of six. We know that the top four of six... Uh, made it to land, which are the land finals in Sydney next month from April 16 to 17. And how the players of this calibre don't find themselves there, I've got no idea. Even up until tonight, they still technically had a chance to go through. I've got massive question marks over what Dan's offers to the team, to be honest. Uh, I know that Pex can struggle with consistency sometimes, but I certainly have a lot of faith in what he can produce and certainly does produce more often than not. But Dan's, for me, I've... I, I'm not sure what he's offering at the moment. I've never, I can only actually think of one map in the history of casting XL5 where he actually led from the front. Remember that map? It was in Counterpit when they played Immunity on Overpass, and Dance was one lead Friday in that instance. A different I think it was iteration. Pex, actually. It was Pex, but also Dance. They both dropped 20 bombs. But nonetheless, because Pex went huge on Cobblestone, it was Dance on Overpass. Since then, I haven't seen anything from him. So really disappointed by him and by the team in general. I think they have got some things oh. to do over the break. I think they'll be disappointed, definitely, um, as yeah. you said, with uh, such young talent at uh, their fingertips. They'll be uh, ruining some missed opportunities there, particularly, um, I mean, obviously there was this best of three as well, but the the one that we uh, saw against Incept, Incept mm -hmm. basically um, didn't do anything particularly special in terms of a counter-strating strategy or anything like that. It was just when the two teams matched up, Inset were playing better team Counter-Strike. That was it. Yep. XL5 really didn't offer too much um, in that instance. But as you said, um, for these guys, I think they just they do need to rejig a few things. They need, need to seriously look at the roles within the team. Um, I mean, I don't want to harp on too much about XL5, but uh, it is a short turnaround too between the seasons. So they do have that chance to um, you know look at redeeming themselves in the offseason and rejigging a few things. And I certainly think um, they should be doing that. But um, full credit to Alpha Sydney there. They fought their way back into that one. Normally, you never see, um, I guess, those best of threes go the way of the team that uh, just, um, I guess, wins that first map. Sometimes you see them peter off after that. You know, they played their first map, they're exhausted. Particularly after being battered on Mirage as well, I felt as though XL5 may have found their way back into that best of three. But Alpha Sydney, completely wipe the map with them on Inferno. So yeah, really I must impressive. admit, after that last map had ended, 
because I was so focused on the game, I didn't actually notice during the time, but I actually found some Steam messages from some of the players of X5 during that BO3 series, which I didn't find or or know until afterwards. And during that match, so during Mirage, I think after they'd lost Cage, they'd actually been PMing me, just trying to confirm that they were eliminated from contention. So the players themselves knew, um, and I think that that would have probably played on their minds, knowing that after they lost that first map cache, that their chances of going through were over, regardless of their performance on Mirage and Inferno. But just to recap now, so Group B, we will have Chiefs, Legacy, Alpha Sydney, and Insect progressing to the land finals in a few weeks' time. That should be really exciting. We will be seeing XL5 and Citadel dropping out. Unfortunately mm. for Citadel, they forfeited their final match of the season tonight, not able to field a five against Team Chiefs, but nonetheless, they were... Um, destined to end up on the bottom of the leaderboard nonetheless. But um, excited to see how those four teams perform at LAN. We'll see how Group A pans out over the next few days. There's still some matches to play. I know that Immunity and Trident played tonight, but I think each team still has one match left. I know I did a write-up today about Mm. the different outcomes for Group B and who needed to beat who and whatnot. I'm thinking I might do another one tomorrow for Group A. So keep your eyes out for that. I'll post it on Twitter and CG and whatnot for that. Yeah, and we'll be looking at... um which matches are being played out tomorrow night too. So we'll be looking at covering some of those, yeah. obviously. So, um, yeah, stick around for that. Of course, uh, well, I think that pretty much wraps up our, our show for this evening. It's been, uh, well, looking at our Skype call, it's been a long one. But nonetheless, it's been some, some good displays of Counter-Strike all around. I'm really looking forward to, uh, obviously, it's it's a conclusion of Group B and now we're going to see some teams in land finals. Incept, I'm keen to see how those guys develop. Um Obviously, post land event, I know maybe I'm getting a bit ahead of myself there, but the experience will be something that those guys will certainly enjoy. And uh, yeah, really, really keen for how things pan out from here on in. Well, they'll get to meet us. It's true. There's a there's a low light for you guys already. You've already got something, you know, a bad experience to look forward to. Forget about your performances on the day. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it, it's it's going to be good. Um, yeah, stay tuned for Noodles Notes with uh, yeah. Group A. Yeah, you like that running ready. title? Yeah. yeah. Noodles notes. That's yeah. a bit boring. Okay, well, we'll come up with something better anyway. Uh, we'll put our thinking caps on. In the meantime, guys, it's been an absolute pleasure. Of course, I've been Jimmy Nesso, the host. Joining me is none other than the nutty PK Noodle. The analyst? Is that what role you gave me tonight on the overlay? No. Trainee. What? Trainee? Did you leave Barr's trainee on there? <laughs> <laughs> no, of course, I left you as the commentator. I don't know if you... Yeah. Is there a hybrid title we can give you? I just commentate. Whatever. Can we just end annotator? This <laughs> <laughs> All right. Anyway, guys, it's been a pleasure. Um, we'll catch you guys very, very shortly with uh, potentially the rest of Group A's action. Until then, keep it real. I know PK's got to sign off, but uh, it's been an absolute pleasure, guys. Catch you shortly. Am I meant to say something? <laughs>